last 2,000 years, the method of drinking tea has been evolving. If you want to taste the flavor of ancient tea, you don't need a time machine to take you back in time. In some places, ancient tea still exists. It is elegant and simple. These moments are something that modern people are unfamiliar with. They are warm laid back and relaxing. Drinking tea is simple. Drinking tea is also complicated. It took the Chinese over 1,000 years to go from something simple to something complicated. It also took over 1,000 years to revert from complex to simple. I am a teacher of tea ceremony. I teach Japanese tea ceremony in Beijing. There are many traditional snacks in Beijing suitable as desserts in Japanese tea ceremony. Sometimes I go and pick some out as well. Jiang Nanlan's hometown is in Zhejiang, and she grew up with the fragrance of tea. 17 years ago, she studied Japanese in Beijing Foreign Studies University and encountered tea ceremony for the first time. After she graduated, she went all the way to Japan to study it. Since then, she has become a professional tea ceremony master. Okay, for the first etiquette, let's bow down. And now gently sit up. When you take the fukusa out from your clothes, use your right hand to hold the corner of the cloth and turn it like this. Coil the cloth with three fingers of your left hand and put your right hand in front of your body. We often hear people comment on there being too many rules and gestures in Japanese tea ceremony, that it's too formulaic, but I think that's just what we lack. Put your left hand on your lap first, then your right hand. This can make sure that you can sit up straight. Japanese tea ceremony involves complicated and long gestures. The strictest tea ceremony lasts for four hours. The ceremony or the format is in fact its content. The appearance it presents, the state it expresses, you can't possibly feel nothing at all. The angle or the height of the hands in every gesture is strictly regulated. It must be done a certain way. Matcha brewed with tea powder is drunk in Japanese tea ceremony. The key step in tea ceremony is to first stir the tea thoroughly with a tea whisk. This is called tencha. You 
send a message to the other party through your body language. It's in the beauty of the host's tension movements. Nowadays, tea ceremony has come to represent traditional Japanese culture. But this ancient way of drinking tea retained many stylistic traces from the Tang and Song dynasties. Zhang Nanlan is not the only one searching for traces of the Tang dynasty from a bowl of tea. In Hong Kong, tea expert Ye Rong Ji attempts to recreate the Tang tea ceremony in another way. You can say Hong Kongers love tea, and you can say that they're not picky about it. Most tea houses in Hong Kong are Chinese restaurants. You go there to have tea and dim sum. Tea isn't the most important thing, but one does keep track. If they use a different tea, the customer will ask why the tea isn't the same. People can tell. Over 20 years ago, Ye Rongjie fell in love with tea ceremony while researching tea kettles. He runs a tea house in Hong Kong Park and is one of the few to promote traditional tea culture in Hong Kong. If you don't mind, ladies first. Okay. Any more questions? Any more questions? That's good. That's good. You end the 90% of the whole world here, right? I think brewing Chinese tea is a comfortable and enjoyable thing, but sometimes it may be too lax, too casual. When I look at Japanese tea ceremony, I see how they perform every step meticulously. That led me to think whether the Chinese have a tea ceremony too. It got me into doing the Tang tea ceremony. Tang dynasty was essentially the era where all the rules were laid down. In particular, Lu Yu wrote a book called The Classic of Tea. The Classic of Tea recorded in detail how tea was drunk at the time and how tea should be made. I find the flavor similar to Qingmao tea in Yunnan. So I use Guar green tea from Yunnan province as a base ingredient for my tea. Tea from the Tang dynasty was mostly made into tea cakes. A royal tea set from the Tang dynasty was once found in the underground palace in Faman Temple, Shanxi. Yurongji's friend borrowed a replica set and invited him to perform a Tang tea ceremony. The first step is to process the tea cake. First, we have to bake the tea cake until the fragrance comes out. Then we'll grind it into tea powder. The grinder here looks like it's sunken in the middle. How could it grind the tea when the grinder is flat? But that's how we'll do it, and the tea will be well ground and nice. There's also a box here, and next to the box is a space. Just push it back and forth, and the tea will be filtered out. The key in Tang tea ceremony is pan frying and cooking. We actually use an iron pot to boil the water. It is very important where the water comes from. Secondly, the temperature is very important. If the water is too hot, pour this water in to lower the water temperature. The water over there is boiling. Put salt, ginger, and cinnamon in the water. This flavor may differ somewhat from what we drink now because we have improved a lot on the art of making tea and the fragrance and flavor of the tea itself should be much better than in the past. This is how tea always has been. Every person has his or her own interpretation. Of course, we cannot say we must drink tea the way they did in the Tang dynasty, but I can't help feeling that even as we drink tea casually today, we can also learn about the origins of the culture of drinking tea and the original spirit in it. The origin of Tang tea lies deep in the mountains.
Every year at Qingming Festival, the Tutia people from Anxi would honor the tea god with Noa opera. This tradition started as early as the Tang Dynasty. A young Tu Xia boy, Xu Ling, grew up in the Anxi Canyon. Today, he and his mother are visiting his newborn nephew. According to Tujia custom, when there are visitors, oil tea must be served. Oil tea has a long history. Legend has it someone once tried to deep fry tea leaves and then cook them in soup to treat illnesses brought on by humid heat in the body. Back in the age of poverty and hardship, tea was once part of New Year's Eve dinner as oil soup in place of meat. Add a little seasoning, like peppercorn or salt. Once the soup boils, add all the fried ingredients into the bowl, so you can eat it all. It's very rich in flavor. <laughs> Eating tea was the Chinese people's most primal way in sampling tea. Anxi is surrounded by mountains. Compared to the world outside the mountains, time seems to pass slower here. Ancient customs are retained here more easily. Shuling likes the taste of oil tea very much, but he can't express it in words. My son Shi Ling fell ill just before he turned two. He got a streptomycin shot and was poisoned from it, losing his hearing. I have two sons. The younger one already has his own child. Ling is delighted to have this new niece and visits her often. Now my greatest wish is for Shi Ling to find a partner and have his own family. One year, the local government subsidized a tea factory to recruit tea workers. So he went to learn to make tea. What Xu Ling learnt is the craft of steamed green tea. It gives the tea a purer green colour and a refreshing, delightful texture. Using steam to kill oxidase activity only takes 40 seconds. After steaming, the tea leaves are first kneaded over the tea dryer at 50 to 80 degrees Celsius without the hands touching the dryer. Then the tea leaves are shaped and brightened. After an hour and a half of manual processing, the tea gives out a refreshing fragrance and becomes pine needle shaped. This is Yulu tea from Anxi. Yulu tea is an essential companion to the people of Anxi during leisure time. In a cup of steamed green tea is a flavor from the Tang Dynasty that the people of Anxi still savor today.
In the town of Anxi, at the foot of the mountains, Xu Ling has another job, making buns. This year, Xi Ling's boss wanted to hire him to make tea, but I objected to him going. I told him to make buns here. It feels safer to have him by my side. When he makes tea, I sometimes get scared he'll be hurt by the machinery, but he insisted on going. Between making buns and making tea, he chose making tea. I am Xu Ling, a Yulu tea master. I can hear the voice of Yulu in my heart. He just likes it. There is no explanation for it. Japan's Shizuoka tea is also famous for steaming and hand kneading. Every spring, the tea masters gather together to study their skills. Tea masters are using the most simple method to inspect the quality of the Shizuoka tea by piling up the needle shaped tea leaves. The higher the pile, the more identical the shape of the leaves are, and the fuller the needle shape is. Celebrating the coming of the tea season is a vital ceremony every year for the people of Shizuoka. The Moriuchi family have grown tea for a living for generations. 20 years ago, Mrs. Moriuchi married into Shizuoka from Tokyo. Now their children are all grown up, and only the couple still live on the tea plantation. Since 2002, the Moriuchi family's tea has been selected to be sent to the royal family. For every first tea harvest in every household, the neighbors will come over and help. The Moriuchi's tea plantation is on a hill not far from their home. Most of the Shizuoka tea is grown on slopes and hills, and it makes up almost half of the green tea produced in Japan. All those helping to pick tea leaves are old people. The first day, I was worried they wouldn't come, but everyone came in smiling and saying good morning. It made me happy to see them so happy. Everyone getting through each day smoothly is the most important thing to me. When the tea pickers said happily that they would come again tomorrow, it made me happy too. Every spring, 
Mrs. Moriuchi and the tea growers of Shizuoka come to China with the best tea of the year to be offered to the forefather of Japanese tea ceremony, Jingshan Temple in Yuhang, Zhejiang. In the Song Dynasty, large numbers of Japanese monks travel to Jingshan Temple in China in search of enlightenment. Today, among the 24 sects of Japanese Zen, 18 originated from Jingshan Temple. Seated meditation is everyday homework for a Zen monk. In the dimly lit Zen room, it is very easy to doze off. No one wants to be wrapped on the shoulder by the inspecting monk due to dozing off. Monks discovered a long time ago that drinking tea gives a refreshing boost. Thus, drinking a bowl of tea before meditating became part of the homework. All right, everybody, please enjoy the tea. Mrs. Moriuchi and the tea growers of Shizuoka are here to pay their respects to the Chinese and Japanese monks who were brought together by Zen and tea all those years ago. The monks of Jingshan and the Song Dynasty created a complete ritual of Jingshan tea ceremony on the foundation of Tencha. The tea ceremony has a fixed setting, equipment, and rundown for Tencha. This Tencha ritual was brought back by the Japanese monks to Japan in its entirety. The various sects of Japanese tea ceremony mostly developed from the foundation of this Jingshan tea ceremony. The Tencha ceremonies from the Song Dynasty can hardly be found anymore in today's China. However, it isn't completely lost. Two thousand seven hundred kilometers from Jingshan Temple in Baiyu County, Sichuan. The highest altitude is five thousand seven hundred meters. It is only nine hundred kilometers from the provincial capital of Chengdu, but it takes three days to reach by car. Katok Temple in Podi, Baiyu County, is the temple with the most history for the Nyingma tradition in the Kampa Tiberian region. A unique offering by fire is being carried out here. The people believe that fire will take this food and tea to their family in another world. The morning homework of the monks of Katok Temple include having a bowl of buttered tea. Buttered tea in Hepo is drunk differently from that in other Tibetan regions. Before making the tea, the tea cake must be ground into powder in the mill. Then it is brewed in water. The tea that was consumed daily in the Song Dynasty was tea powder. The tea was prepared with a tea whisk, and in Ho Po, this tool was replaced by a Tibetan wooden cylinder. The people of Ho Po believe their ancestors were weapon craftsmen who worked for King Gizar. This tribe was most prosperous during the Song Dynasty and made a living from forging for generations. For a time, they lived isolated from the rest of the world. The way tea is consumed here took shape during the Song Dynasty, and it hasn't changed since then. Modern Japanese tea ceremony is influenced by the Song Dynasty in China. 
Poetry, books, paintings, and music are all soulmates to T. There is a tea house near Kennen Temple in Kyoto, Japan. Its owner is Tsukamoto Heihachiro, descendant of Japan's traditional meditative music on shakuhachi. Tsukamoto started playing the shakuhachi when he was six and is a Zen practitioner. Shakuhachi is his way of training. Today, Tsukamoto has been invited to Kenin Temple to be accompanist for a tea ceremony. The guests for the ceremony are from Jingshan Temple in China. The Jingshan tea ceremony from the Song Dynasty may not exist anymore, but the Yotsugashira Chakai, derived from the Jingshan tea ceremony, has been preserved in Japan. Yotsugashira refers to the reception of guests in Chinese Zen, with four main guests. Each guest brings eight accompanying guests. The host will first serve each person, in specific order, a tenmoku bowl with tea powder and a snack box. Then, with a tea whisk and cleansing bottle, the host will add water and prepare the tea for each person. Zen is interconnected in spirit. There is Zen in tea and Zen in my playing, shakuhachi. They're all related to Zen. Everything is Zen. Tsukamoto comes to China twice every year to teach a class and take apprentices. His classes have always been free, and he custom makes a shakuhachi for each of his students. Fifteen years ago, Tsukamoto went to China to learn breathing techniques and playing traditional music. His teacher asked him to spread the art of shakuhachi to Japan. Tsukamoto kept his promise, and his earliest student has already opened a dojo branch in China. Tsukamoto, like tea, is evidence of the cultural exchange between China and Japan. The first people to bring the seeds of tea back to Japan were monks. It was also monks who made the Japanese fall in love with tea. In the early Southern Song Dynasty, the monk Eisai came to China twice to study the culture of Zen tea ceremony. After Eisai brought tea seeds back to Japan, Japan finally started to grow tea trees extensively. He was later revered as the forefather of tea, and Japanese tea ceremony was thus branded with Song traditions. With the downfall of the Song dynasty, cultural exchange between China and Japan diminished, and the tea ceremonies of both countries started to develop in different directions respectively. Kamakura is the hometown of Japanese samurai. The activity, yabusame, became popular in the 12th century and has been preserved to this day, reminding the people of Kamakura not to forget the martial spirit of the past. Apart from martial arts, the most important training for a samurai is to attain spiritual peace. They found a way through tea ceremony. In the 16th century, the fiercest samurais in Japan, Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, shared a tea ceremony teacher, Sen no Rikyu. Sen no Rikyu is commonly seen as the one who epitomized Japanese tea ceremony. His family lasted 400 years, and his descendant, Sengen Shitsu, is seen by the Japanese as a modern-day Sen no Rikyu. It is a great honor to have tea prepared by Sengen Shitsu himself.
I have a memory from when I was around eight years old. When I was back in first grade, my father called me into the tea room one day. Once I went in, I started practicing tea ceremony in the tea room. About 500 years ago, my ancestor Sen no Rikyu said tea wasn't just for drinking. We should create peace in a world without class, a world of equality through a cup of tea. Thus, as a master writer, Sen no Rikyu became Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi's tea ceremony teacher. As they say, a skilled scholar and warrior. Being a warrior alone isn't enough. Contemporary Kendo focuses on the training of the body and the mind to create strong spiritual power. It is a transcendence of the samurai spirit Kendo practitioners can still assist their training through tea ceremony. The sword was once seen as a symbol of the samurai spirit, something that should never leave their masters. However, when one enters the tea room, the sword must be left outside. Even Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who ruled over Japan, was no exception. After Toyotomi Hideyoshi unified Japan by force, he reached the pinnacle of his power. He was eager to exert his position through tea ceremony. In Atami's Museum of Art, there is displayed a replica of the tea room that belonged to Toyotomi Hideyoshi. This tea room was made with over 40,000 pieces of gold fill, and along with the gold tea utensils, this room is priced at 3.9 million US dollars. Hideyoshi built a gold tea house. He wanted to surprise Sen no Rikyu and called him there. Hideyoshi served him tea personally, but Sen no Rikyu wasn't surprised at all. Instead, he asked, what are you doing? The tea house Sen no Rikyu looked up to was completely different. Konichi An is Uron Senke's most precious tea house. It has been passed on for 16 generations. Its layout must match the ideals of tea ceremony, harmony, tranquility, simplicity, and solitude. There is also only one principle for the garden, to abide by the rules of nature. If we didn't have green in the world, what would the world be like? When you see green tea on the tea bowl, you can see humans and nature blending together as one. Our ancestors put great emphasis on this belief. Sendo Rikyu passed this on to us, and we pass it on to our descendants, and so the tradition continues. In the 400 years after Sendo Rikyu, various sects were derived from Japanese tea ceremony. As the samurai of the last century stepped back from the stage of history, Japan became a modern society. Traditional tea ceremony was forgotten for a time, until the end of the Second World War, when the Japanese once again found spiritual reprieve in tea ceremony.
The tea in Miyagi Mako's hand isn't the best in Shizuoka, but there are hand-painted drawings of the tea maker on every package. The painters of these pictures are all Mako's children. The children like to draw pictures of tea picking on the tea plantation. But even more than that, they like to draw their mother. Forty years ago, popular actress Miyagi Meiko fell in love with the author Junosuke Yoshiyuki. Since they didn't have any children, Meiko decided to retire from acting and set up a foster care organization for children with special needs. My husband told me the following. One. Make sure you don't complain. Two. Don't tell me you have no money. Three. See this through. If you could do that, you could do it. It's hard. Apart from drawing, what the children like most is to prepare tea for the guests and their mother. Donations from the community are the main source of support for the children. And tea is the gift that children give back to those who give to them. When the weather is good, neighboring tea growers will also take the children tea picking. The children will carefully pack the tea they picked to give to people who have helped them. I want to give children who suffered in earthquakes and other disasters the chance to learn and be loved. All children deserve the opportunity to blossom and achieve in life regardless of their circumstance. Mako hopes that children can learn something from tea ceremony. Is one useless just because they are handicapped? I don't believe that's true. As long as one focuses on doing something, one can do it well. I've always believed that. <laughs> Miyako's husband, Junosuke, passed away 20 years ago. At almost 90, Miyako is finding it hard to look after these children by herself. However, she believes that even after she is gone, the children will live on happily in this world of paintings and tea. For 400 years, the Japanese have lived by the tea ceremony rituals formed during Senno Rikyu's era, using it as a guide to the ancient wise men's thoughts and ways. China, on the other hand, replaced the complicated tea preparation rituals with freer brewing methods since the Ming Dynasty, taking Chinese tea ceremony into an all-new era. We can say Chaozhou Kung Fu tea is a living fossil of Chinese tea culture. Even in Chaozhou, where everyone is adept at making tea, Ye Han Zhong's skilled tea making is renowned. Some say he makes the tea come to life. 
After decades of kung fu tea brewing, each has their own way of making it in Chaozhou, and I brew it with my heart. When we say kung fu, we're talking about the fire, the water, the equipment, and the brewing skill. The final goal is to brew a good cup of tea. In fact, there is a chant to the brewing. Pour hot, splash low, scrape the foam, pour the lid. Guang Gong inspects the city. Han Xin inspects the army. In the early Ming Dynasty, tea drinking in China underwent a major revolution. Frying replaced steaming, and loose leaf tea replaced tea cakes. Tea was no longer eaten and people were more happy to savor the original flavor and fragrance of tea through brewing tea. In Chaozhou, tea brewing is a common skill found everywhere. In the Chaozhou and Shantou region, you have a tea shop every hundred meters and a place to drink tea no more than every 20 meters. In Chaozhou, every person who passes by your door is a guest. When you pass by someone's door, the owner must make tea for you. Every person and every family feels like they haven't eaten if they haven't drunk tea that day. It's part of life here. From the time a child starts drinking water, an adult will be feeding him tea. Once the child has had tea, the habit will stick until he dies. You can't change it. <laughs> the most common brew with the people of Chaozhou is Feng Huang Dan Chong tea. This tea was named after its origin, Fen Huang Mountain in Chaozhou. On Feng Huang Mountain, there are over 3,700 old tea trees that are over 200 years old. Ye Han Zhong teaches about the craft of tea in university, and taking his students hiking in search of tea is the first lesson of his class. At first, a friend introduced me, saying there was something good up there, some good tea. I thought we needed to find this resource and protect it. Halfway there, I was deprived of oxygen. It was a hard hike. However, after hiking a few more times, I got used to it. The hike is actually a kind of life experience. It may be difficult during the process, but once you persevere and succeed, you'll get a wide open view. Whether a cup of tea is good or bad, one sip will tell you about the heart of the person who made it. Feng Huang Dan Chong is a half-fermented oolong tea, famous for its many fragrances. There are two things to strive for when making tea. One is to make it smooth, and the other is to make it fragrant. Here, have a smell. It's very fragrant. Think about that when you're making tea. Training in the wilderness is essential for young people learning about tea. However, Ye Han Zhong's greatest wish is to use the character of tea to influence and help more young people. Today is orientation day at Hanshan Normal University. Ye Han Zhong hurried to the school. He hopes to guide his students and perform for the new students the brewing skills of Chaozhou Kung Fu tea. Learning to brew and drink tea requires discipline. Have some tea. Once your heart and mind is calm, you will find that charisma. Making tea is a good thing, a happy thing. One can make tea for life. For over 1,000 years, Easterners meditated on the meaning of life in a bowl of tea. The people of the Tang Dynasty fried their tea. The people of the Song Dynasty created Tensha. 
and the people of the Ming Dynasty switched from the tradition of eating tea to savoring the refreshing fragrance of brewing tea in water. On the other hand, Japanese tea lovers' adherence to traditional tea ceremony nurtured the hearts and minds of the nation. Time fostered the flavor of tea, and tea exudes its fragrance from its soul. Every tea lover is training for a tea ceremony that is unique to them. Over the last 100 years, tea has journeyed all over the world and influenced many cultures. From Asia to Africa, tea has found a home in the soils of different nations. Tea, the story of a leaf. Episode 4, Foreign Lands, Homeland.